You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. Hey folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike, and today we're taking a look at the pens that come in these cool cases. These are Kasama pens, and these are the cases that they come in, which I would bet a dollar are made by hand in the Philippines, just like the pens themselves. These pens are made by a dude who is a uh, physician, and he makes these like in his spare time. I like to like nest the little one in there. Yeah, how fun is that? Anyway, I really like these cases. They get oohs and ahs when I brought them out. Let's take a look at the pens. I have two to show you. These are on loan to me by Mark Backus, Nib Grinder. You can find him online, uh, Instagram, and uh, through his webpage. And um, he is, as far as I know, the only source for Kasama pens in the U.S. These are, like I said, made in the Philippines in very small numbers by, a, like, one guy. And uh, so, like, supplies are limited and uh, kind of sporadic. But if you can get your hands on one of these, I'd say give it a try. So let's take a look at them. I've got two models, like I said. This is the Kasama Una. This particular one is made of Ultim and Titanium. This is anodized by my friend Matthew. Hey, Matthew. Uh, and he did a really banging job on this thing. I've seen, you know, whole pin anodizations that Matthew's done, and these are really good. I've had these since the Baltimore Pin Show, and I have to give them back, which makes me sad, but what are you going to do? And uh, so let's talk about some features and specs and stuff, and then we'll... Uh, you know, compare them to other pens and do a little writing sample, because why not? All right, so on the top of the pen, you'll notice there is this very nice little palm tree. I dig that. That is uh, that is a symbol. This is the uh, the brand symbol branding for this pen. That's really all that's on here is this palm tree and then the palm tree and the nib. There's no text on here, nothing. So if you want a pen that's kind of incognito and doesn't scream brands, this one. I mean, the form of this thing screams a brand, because there's nothing that looks really like this. It is a chonker of a pen. Uh, here it is next to... Um, this is a uh, this is an Opus 88 Omar, uh, which is pretty big, right? Um, but uh, let's see, here it is. Uh, this is a Pilot Custom 74. So this is a shorter pen, but it is it is a thick boy. All right, we'll see it next to a bunch of other stuff here soon. So on the outside of the pen, you have these nice grooves in the cap. You have this nice transition from the titanium down to the Ultim. Ultim is a uh, uh, U-L-T-E-M is a really interesting material. It sounds interesting when you knock it against each other. Here, let's do this with the microphone, because why not? Like, it doesn't sound like... I don't know what it sounds like, but it doesn't sound like plastic to me for some reason. But Ultim, as I looked it up, is a, an amorphous amber to transparent thermoplastic with characteristics similar to the re related, related plastic PEEK, P-E-E-K, uh, relative to PEEK, P-E-I, which is this stuff, uh, polyether... polyether... I polyetheramide. Uh, it's cheaper, but lower in impact strength and usable temperature. Well, it's got plenty of impact strength and usable temperature for, uh, for a fountain pen. <laughs> I'll tell you that for sure. Uh, although the peak looks very cool. Google that up and you'll see some. Uh, my friend Kat has some, uh, has some very nice, uh, has a very nice pink peak one. Uh, so we've got that cool bit there. Oh, you should also notice that there is a very small air pocket up here. So this is a thing that I really like in a pen is when they don't have a whole lot of air around the nib because that is what contributes to your nib drying out. I've had this for, I don't know, three-ish weeks now, maybe a little bit more, and uh, it has not dried out yet. And that's using this pigmented ink, ink from Kala, uh, which I'm really into. So uh, no problems there. Nice, small air pocket, nicely uh, nicely finished cap. Like it is... It is smooth. You got this nice bevel at the lip of the cap, which is not, which is I think well done. Uh, the edges up here are rounded. It's not all uh, not all sharp angles and such. The uh, this, however, this is when the pen starts to look really interesting. This is I think as much branding as the uh, Kasama Una really needs. You've got this very exaggerated uh, grip section, which. I, uh, I haven't seen anything like this really before. I love this pinch. I have to say, when I saw this in pictures, I was like, this pen is weird. Uh, but Matthew and Kat said, no, 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 we're coming to Dallas Pen Show. We'll bring you some Kasama Unas. You're going to like this thing. I'm like, all right, man. I, I, I don't know. Well, when you hold this pen, you're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. My fingers fit right in there naturally. I also, sometimes I put a finger up here when I'm writing. I don't, I don't really know when I started doing that. I used to be a a concentrated holder like this, but with these two pens, I tend to put two fingers in the little groove and then one up here, and uh, it writes very nicely. Uh, you can see here at the front of the section, you have these very nice little threads. They're very small. They're very smooth, although you can feel a little bit of an edge if you get up here to the leading edge of this thing, uh, but not much. The machining on this is real clean, I think. 
Uh, I really like the I like the look, I like the look, and I like the feel. There's also not much of a you can you can just barely feel the transition here, just barely. And I think I really like the the, the color contrast between the sort of amber peak and the or peak uh, amber ultum and the the titanium that's anodized here. I think it's really good. When you unscrew this guy. It's got a lot of threads there on the barrel. It's only a couple of revolutions to take the cap off. Bunch of them for the barrel. You can see how thick this material is. It's it's a chunker. It's a chunker, man. Also, look at the, look at this uh, look at the converter inside this section. <laughs> like it's really just kind of. You'd think it'd be swimming around in there, but I think it gets narrower as it goes down, and so this doesn't really wiggle uh, at all. It doesn't fall out or any weird thing like that. But uh, I wouldn't eyedropper this pen, at least not in this configuration because of the metal. Uh, I would. Uh, you know, maybe if you get an all plastic one and they do make all plastic ones of various kinds, uh, maybe then, but I don't know. I kind of, I really like, I see, I like seeing through it. I don't know. I'm digging it. It's like your converter is trapped in amber, like one of those mosquitoes and the Jurassic Park. This uh, nib is a number six uh, Yovo nib. So there are a zillion options for this. Although this is, I, I mean, I got it from Mark Backus. And so I would imagine he tuned to this a little bit and uh, it writes so nicely. It's a, this is a fine. And I was like, mm, okay, I'll trust you. And uh, I like it a lot. All right. Let's look at the other pen. This is the, the chonker version, and this is the more sleek, uh, streamlined version, I think. Uh, you still have the two bands in the cap. This is uh, definitely like a little bit of branding there as far as uh, uh, Kasama's so far. I think they only have like these two models. And then you also have the, the palm tree up here again. This pen is uh, aluminum and Delrin. Delrin's a type of plastic. There we go. And you can see... Well, nothing because it's totally dark in there, but there's a nice step in there to give you a similar sort of ink pocket to what you had on the other. And I'll tell you what, I've been, <laughs> I did a dumb thing and I'm going to get ink on my fingers again. Like my ink, I've got ink on my hands. Uh, and that's because I was messing around with these pens and I, I didn't, <laughs> I, I did the ink reviews. And so I like bloop some ink on the page and smeared it around. And then I didn't retract the ink, like didn't suck the ink back into the converter. So there's like ink in the caps and I'm getting ink like all on my hands, but yeah, whatever. I'm an ink reviewer. It's, it's a, it's a piece of the job. So, uh, when you, uh, uncap this guy, you'll notice that this is much sleeker, uh, than the Una. This is the Kasama Tala is what this model is called. T-A-L-A -A. still uses the number six Yovo nib. No differences there. This is a nib unit you can unscrew and replace with many different things. Uh, you've also got the same kind of pinch, although not nearly as exaggerated as on the Una. And I think it's a very comfortable sort of pinch. Um, this one, the section diameter is between 11 and 15 millimeters. This one is between 10 and 14. So 10 down here in the pinch, 14 when you get up to the widest part of the body, because there's like, there's a, there's no real, there's no, no real transition here, right? It's like it's all, it's all one piece, unibody construction almost. Although it, there, there are two pieces here. I bet looking at it, you're not going to guess where the where the where the break is. Well, I'll show you in here in a sec. Um, I think these threads are just as smooth as they are on the Una, and I think this is a very comfortable pin to use. Like I, with the other one, I tend to put two fingers down here and one up on the body a little bit. I don't know why, but I do. Um, there's I know there's a little bit of ink in this cap, but um, when you find the the center hole around the the posting, it actually posts super well. And this Delrin cap is very light. It doesn't throw off the balance or anything. Uh, I do think it's a little bit wide and it sort of pushes the pin away from my finger and, or the way, away from the web of my hand, which I think is like, I'm not loving the, the positioning so much. I tend to just use this unposted. See, I told you I was going to get that on my hand. There we go. Just add a little bit to my hand. This is a very waterproof ink too. So it's going to be with me for a while. Uh, but I think this is a great, this is a great size to write with unposted. Although you can post it if you want. All right, let's look at it next to a, oh, I was going to open it up for you. Totally forgot. Here we go. Okay, so if you look at the metal, um, guess where it's going to open? All right, you've guessed. There it is, right there. I bet you guessed it was up here because I always think it's going to be up here too. But it's not, it's right there. Okay, so let's uh, gra grab my tray of pens. Let's uh, look at these all together, and then we'll uh, do some comparisons. I'll do a writing sample. We'll talk a little bit about pros and cons and, and prices, and uh, I'll show links at the end and all this sort of thing. So hold on just a sec. Okay, so uh, here it is next to a whole bunch of other pens. Uh, maybe not as many as I usually throw in here, but like whatever. It's enough, I think. Down here at the small end, this is the Sailor Pro Gear, the standard Pro Gear. This is the Kasama Tala, the Kasama Una, the uh, Sailor 1911. This is the standard size, not the large. This is the uh, Aurora 888 Black Mamba. This is a uh, Parker Duofold, uh, the modern one, the bigger version. I can never remember which one of those. 
I see the Centennial or the uh, International, but you know, whatever. This is the, uh, of course, the Lamy 2000. This is the Franklin Christoph 02, and this is a Conid Minimalistica, just for uh, some examples and like price and size ranges. So you can see that it, these are actually fairly short pens. They're a little bit shorter than the uh, the 1911, but the reason I have these spaced out is because the the caps are very wide and they don't fit in these hole in these grooves as well as the rest of these pens. So I, I didn't want it to be. Like if I put this one next to it, they just kind of all moosh together. It's kind of weird. Uh, but let's take the caps off and see uh, see uncapped lengths. All right, there you go. So uh, once you uncap it, it's actually they're significantly longer than this 19, uh, 1911 and the uh, the Pro Gear. They're in the same sort of range as the uh, the larger Parker and the uh, Eight and the O2. Uh, it's in the you know roughly the same size, a little bit shorter than the O2, but not a whole lot. So uh, uncapped, totally normal size of pen. The cap just posts or the cap just caps on very very deeply, so you get that illusion that it's a short pen when it's really not. Same kind of thing you get, I think, with the Aurora Optima, the Optima and the uh, uh, and the AD, uh, the 88, which this is a version of, um, the Optima always looks shorter because of the way the cap is. But uh, when you take it and uh, uncap it, much the same. Okay, so let's do a little writing sample and then talk some, talk some pros and cons. I got some pros and cons for you. Okay, so here we have my uh, my Rhodia paper. This is my Galen, uh, Galen leather wooden like writing pad holder guy. And this is the Kasama Una with a uh, fine nib. And it is a Yovo nib, so if you used a Yovo nib, you know these can be very, very good. Uh, I haven't had any problems with this one at all. Of course, it's coming from Mark Backus, so I would be shocked if I did. Like, that would have been a big surprise uh, if I didn't really like the feel of this nib. But uh, this nib and this ink and this pen has been an absolute joy to use for the last few weeks, and uh, I'm glad I've gotten to. And this is the Kasama Tala, which is using an extra fine nib. And I will tell you, I am not an extra fine nib guy, but... Um, But uh, man, this is this is such a good extra fine nib. Like it's 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 quite fine. But uh, I don't mind using it even to write in my Tomoe River um, uh, uh, planner or anything like that. It's it's got a little bit of feedback, but it's an extra fine. You should expect that kind of thing. And the flow has been great. Uh, it has not dried up at all in this cap. I, like I said, I assume uh, I can't see through this one, but it's probably got an ink <laughs> or a. Um, uh, an air pocket about this big. So most of this is uh, most of this is just like, you know, locked off and you're not going to have it dry out on you, which I think is a great feature. All right, so these totally work as expected. All right, so um, when we get to like pros and cons of these guys, let's take them one at a time. Um, pros for the, uh, the Kasama Una, uh, I'm going to say that uh, it's got a unique design. This is a design that you haven't seen on other pens, and it's a design that uh, really, I think, stands out. The grip is extremely comfortable for me. I would say like if you get a chance to try it, do, but uh, for me, it's very, very comfortable. I also like the chunk of this pen. It is a, it is, it's a, it's a big pen, and I, I really like that about it. I'm not going to lose this thing. Uh, it's not like, this is one pen that does not blend in on my desk. This is one that I can always find. Uh, you know it's in your pocket. Uh, I dig it. Also, it comes in really cool materials. You can get different things like uh, bronze and titanium. Uh, you can get peak in this Ultim. You can get all kinds of cool materials and stuff with this, and I dig that. Now, for cons, uh, low production numbers. These are kind of hard to get a hold of. You might want to contact uh, Mark Backus, uh, nib grinder, and uh, you know, say, hey, I'm looking for one of these pens. Let me know when you get some in stock, uh, because you know it's it's a little hard to get a hold of. Also, they're a little on the expensive side. This particular one will go for 415 with the titanium uh, anodized grip. You uh, are paying a bit more for this titanium, but there is a big range of these prices because if you go for an all plastic one, they're about 300 bucks. Uh, so if you get this in all Ultim or Peak or some such thing, it's going to be closer to 300 which is not cheap like that's not a it's not an impulse buy price but man the this thing is made so nicely i i really i think 300 bucks is not crazy for this 
Um, but if you get it in, uh, you can also get it in like bronze instead of titanium. And I like bronze a lot. I've been a fan of that. It, uh, it tarnishes to a very cool color. Here's a bronze pen. This one's bronze. Look at that. Look at that neat, like, uh, tarnish action we've got going on here. I imagine that'd be really cool in this, uh, Kasama as well. Uh, and also I have to say, uh, as a, as a con, the chonk. Because some people are not going to like the bigness of this pen. It is a big, thick pen. When you get it in titanium, it can be really heavy. You can get these made of all bronze and all titanium, I, I think, as well. And that goes up to around uh, about like 500 bucks. It adds like another another 75 bucks to the price. But that's also got to be so heavy. I, I don't know if I'd want to do that. This one does weigh in at 1.6 ounces, which is not exactly... It's not light, but it's not maybe as heavy as you would think because the Ultim is actually very lightweight. All right, so let's talk... Uh, about the the Tala. This one, I'm going to say the pros for this one, it is a slim pen, compa especially compared to this. Uh, it's, uh, it's you know, it's more comparable to your, your Pilots and uh, your, your Lammies and other things you might be more familiar with. It's got a more, um, more understated shape, I think. It's not going to draw as many stairs as the Una. I like to get a pen that gets me, like, some stairs, but not, like, a million stairs. So this one, uh, if somebody's like, oh, it's a weird-looking pen, I'm like, yeah, hold this thing. You're going to love it. And they're like, ooh, because that's what I did. I think with this one, it's much more normal. It's also um, sort of... It's, it's going to fit in in more places. This is a, a fairly loud pen. If you're going to the boardroom with this thing, people are going to notice. If you're showing up in a meeting, people are noticing. This one, they might not. It might like just fly under the radar and you have just like this very nice pen. You're like, oh yeah, I really enjoy the enjoy the experience of this thing. Also, I should say a pro of both of these is the uh, Yovo number six nib. It's a great nib. There are a lot of different things you can swap in here if you uh, like want to have some varieties. So this is an extra fine. I probably wouldn't use this much as an extra fine. Well, I would say that, but I actually really have, I've been using this a lot, so I would probably use this, but sometimes you want something bigger. So you can put all kinds of things in these. Um, and uh, I think this has got a good weight. This aluminum is really nice. It's got a good feel to it, this brushed aluminum. It doesn't feel slippery at all. It's, it's kind of, this is kind of the perfect grip to be using metal. And I think this one too, because I like the feel of metal, but I don't like it when it slips and slides and gets sweaty and greasy or whatever, you know. Ew, that sounds gross. But like, you know, your hand oils and stuff can make it slippery. Or if you just like put lotion on your hands, as I know we're all doing now because we're washing our hands a million times a day. Uh, but this does not get slippery, which is cool. So here's my one quibble with this pen. And that's something that I have overcome by just by getting used to it. But if you are a person who grabs the top of the cap and the bottom of the pen and you unscrew, you're going to unscrew the body of this pen. I unscrewed the body of this pen so many times before I figured out like, oh, if you just open it up like this. You're never going to have a problem. But since you can't see where that break is because the machining is so tight, uh, a lot of times we'll be like, eh, oh, darn it, I unscrewed the body. That's my only quibble. You don't have that with this because you know to hold. Actually, this holds on a little bit tighter for some reason. Maybe it's because of the different materials. Maybe the threading's a little bit different. But I've actually never had that problem here. Plus, you can see the difference in the barrel, and so maybe you hold it here. But for whatever reason, with the Tala, I tend to, uh, I tend to unscrew the barrel when I mean to unscrew the cap. That's my only quibble with this thing. Also, it's a little on the expensive side. This one uh, goes for 300 bucks. It's a little bit cheaper than the Una. I haven't heard about what other versions of this are available, different materials and stuff. I think it's just a very new design, and so there just aren't that many of them out there. All right, so this... All right, so this has been the uh, a pair of Kasama pens, the Kasama Una and the Kasama Tala. Um, stick around for uh, you know an inform a bunch of information about lengths and widths and all that sort of thing that I will have on here. But uh, man, I think these are actually really nice pens, and if you can get your hands on one, I'd say give it a shot. And if the around three hundred dollar price point and up doesn't scare you off, man, these are really good pens to add to one's collection, and uh, I dig them. All right, that's it. Thanks very much to go to Mark Backus for letting me borrow these guys. Uh, they will be going back to him uh, very in the next couple of days. And uh, then, uh, you know, maybe maybe you can you can buy one. So contact Mark. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Peace out. Uh, oh, and uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I know a lot of y'all aren't subscribed. Go ahead and subscribe. You stuck around this long. Subscribe, yo.